For our last topic in genetics, we are going to discuss patterns of inheritance. When Gregor Mendel studied his pea plants back in the 1800s, he was lucky enough to have found an organism with very, very simple genetics. But now we know that organisms are much more complicated than pea plants. Things like broccoli and cauliflower, when they're mixed together, don't take on dominant or recessive traits, they blend. This redfish and bluefish makes a spotted fish. And who can explain what's going on with these flower petals? Today we're going to talk about four different types of inheritance. Complete dominance, incomplete dominance, codominance, and sex links traits. So let's get started. Our first pattern of inheritance is the one discovered by Gregor Mendel, complete dominance. In this case, the dominant allele overpowers the recessive allele. This is what we've been studying all right along. You can see in this picture, the tall plant is the dominant, the short plant is the recessive. We make very simple Punnett squares with this type of inheritance. Capital T. Capital T represents the dominant genotype, while lowercase t, lowercase t represents the recessive genotype. Cross these two in a Punnett square, and we find that 100% of the offspring turns out heterozygous, yet the phenotype for 100% of the offspring reflects the tall dominant genotype. The second type of inheritance is called incomplete dominance. In this type, neither allele is more dominant than the other, so the result is a third phenotype that is a blended version of the two parent phenotypes. In this case, we have a red snapdragon crossed with a white snapdragon, and the result is 100% pink snapdragons. Notice that in this type of inheritance, we use two different letters to represent both of the parents. In the other type of inheritance, complete dominance, that Gregor Mendel studied, we used the same letter, but we used capital and lowercase. In this case, all the letters are capitalized, but we use different letters for the different alleles. So for the red coloration in the snapdragon flower, we use capital R, capital R. For the white coloration, we use capital W, capital W. The results in the Punnett square are R, W, R, W, R, W, R, W. 100% of the offspring are heterozygous pink. So the genotype would be written as 100% RW. The phenotype would be written as 100% pink. And again, this is the heterozygous or hybrid form. So just to review, with complete dominance, you get either the dominant or recessive trait show up. In incomplete dominance, you don't get either of the parent phenotypes. You end up with a third phenotype, which is a blended version of the original two. Our third form of inheritance is called codominance. In codominance, both alleles are equally dominant, so they both show up in the offspring. This first cartoon shows us how pandas are made. A white bear 
mates with a black bear, we end up with pandas, right? No, that's actually not how it works, but I found this cartoon on the internet and I thought it was really cute. And it kind of shows you the idea behind codominance. If you have one organism with dominant traits mating with another organism with equally dominant traits, both of the traits are going to show up. So this doesn't actually happen in panda bears, so this is not right. So erase that from your mind. However, this is how checkered chickens come about. So this chicken had one parent that was black, one parent that was white, and the result is not a blending like an incomplete dominance, but rather spots or checkers. Another example that might be interesting to you is blood types in humans. Now many of you have probably heard that there are multiple different blood types. There's type A, type B, type AB, and type O. There's also something called the RH factor, which incorporates A negative, A positive, B negative, B positive, AB negative, AB positive, and O negative and O positive. That we're not going to talk about today. That gets a little bit more complicated. Today, we are going to focus on the actual blood type itself. If you look at these pictures, it shows you a really simplistic view of what a red blood cell looks like in a human. If you are type A, you have these little antigens on the outside of your blood that are called A antigens. If you are type B, you have B antigens. Now, blood type is a version of a codominant inheritance pattern because you can inherit A from one parent, B from another parent, and as a result, you can end up with an AB blood type. But what's interesting is that blood type gets a little bit more complicated because there's also a recessive form, and that's blood type O. If someone who is blood type A receives a blood donation from someone who's blood type A, they will receive it and not get sick from it. However, if someone who's blood type A receives a donation from someone who's blood type O, the A antigens on the outside of the red blood cell will not recognize the B antigens on the donated blood. And the type A blood will attack the type B blood, which will cause clotting and could potentially lead to death. If someone who is type AB were to receive type A blood, then they would welcome it warmly into their bodies because they have type A antigens that would recognize type A blood. Similarly, if you're type AB and you receive a donation of B blood, you would recognize the B antigens and your body would receive it without clotting. Since type O blood has no antigens for your anyone's body can take in type O blood. No one's blood rejects type O. So because of that, type AB blood is referred to as the universal recipient. That means someone who is type AB can receive anyone's blood. They can get a donation from someone who is type A, type B, type O, or type AB. Someone who is type O blood is referred to as a universal donor. That means that they are able to donate blood to someone with type A, someone with type B, someone with type AB, or someone with type O. So if you happen to be an individual who has type O blood, the American Red Cross 
loves to contact you to donate blood because if someone is in the hospital and needs a blood transfusion and they get in a bind, nine times out of ten, doctors are going to grab type O blood because they're not always going to know the blood type of the patient who's bleeding out. But everyone can receive type O blood. And sex-linked traits. Last but not least, our last pattern of inheritance is called sex-linked traits. Sex-linked traits are interesting because these are genes that are specifically found only on the sex chromosomes, on either the X or the Y. Most commonly when scientists talk about sex-linked traits, they're talking about genes that exist on the X chromosome. The picture on the left, if you can see it well, if, and notice that there is a circle of red pixelations and that there's a number in the inside, then that means that you have great vision. However, if you can't see that there is a seven and a four outlined in green, then that might mean that you have color blindness. Color blindness is a sex-linked trait. It's located on the X chromosome. It is more commonly found in males. And the reason that is is because sex-linked traits are on the X chromosome most commonly. For a male to be colorblind, he only needs to inherit one copy of the faulty gene. A female, however, because she has two X chromosomes, even if she has a faulty copy of the gene for seeing color, she still has this other chromosome to rely on to help her out. So in order to be completely colorblind, a female would need to inherit two copies of the faulty gene. So what happens most commonly in sex-linked traits is that you find them in males because it's easier to inherit just one copy than it is to inherit two copies. But you do find females who are carriers. So in this picture here on the right, this is showing a disease called hemophilia. This is a blood clotting disease where your blood just doesn't clot up very well and you end up with a lot of bruising. It's very common for men to have hemophilia. It's very rare for females to have it because again, it's on the X chromosome. This mother is a carrier for hemophilia. That means she has one copy of the faulty gene. The father does not have hemophilia. When they have children together, the son inherits the Y chromosome from his dad and the X chromosome from his mom. In the case of the son on the left, he inherited the good copy of the gene from his mom. This son, however, inherited the Y from his father and the faulty copy of the X chromosome gene for hemophilia from his mother. So he ended up with hemophilia. You can see that they also have two daughters. This daughter is a carrier and this daughter does not have hemophilia. So that's it for patterns of inheritance. Now you've learned about four types altogether. Review these notes, review this video, and let me know if you have any questions.